June 27, 2017. Alex Smith, a 26-year-old restaurant manager in Minnesota, is found dead in his apartment. He died alone, scared and helpless. You see, at 23 years old, Alec was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. The diagnosis was a shock, but at least he could still get his life-saving medicine, insulin, on his mom's insurance. But then he turned 26, and according to the insurance policy, he was now on his own. He couldn't be covered under his mom's insurance anymore. He tried to get insurance for himself, but it would cost $440 a month. And before he was even covered, he would have to pay $7,600 out of his own pocket for the medicine he needed to survive. He couldn't afford any of that, so he rolled the dice and resorted to buying the insulin with cash. He was trying to save up to afford insurance, but as a restaurant manager, that was next to impossible. One vial of insulin costs around $285, and most diabetics need two to four vials a month. That is more than $1,000 a month for a drug meant to keep him alive. So when Alex's money ran out, he had to start rationing his medication to make it last longer. Instead of living paycheck to paycheck, he was living insulin shot to insulin shots. But even his best efforts didn't make a difference. My son died because he could not afford his insulin. He died 27 days after losing insurance. The cause of death? Diabetic ketoacidosis, a direct result of his body not getting the insulin he desperately needed. But what if I told you all of this was 100% avoidable? What if I told you that one vial of insulin costs just around $5 to produce? Even with all the added research, marketing, and sales fees, there's no way a $5 commodity magically turns into $250. Let's put it this way, what do you see? Someone getting access to first world healthcare? Someone getting a prescription for medication that would keep them alive? I'll tell you what I see. I see $1,000 per month just for insulin. That's $12,000 a year, $660,000 in their lifetime if insulin prices stay the same, which they don't. And that's the average. Some people need more insulin and end up paying thousands of dollars more every year just to stay alive. There are 37 million Americans living with diabetes. If just half of them needed insulin to stay healthy, that's over $220 billion a year in revenue. But here's the problem. Insulin doesn't have to be that expensive. That same vial that costs $250 in America costs around $35 in Canada. So what is really going on here? How can a drug cost almost 10 times more in America than it does for its next door neighbor? This is the insulin racket. Insulin manufacturers have massive teams of salespeople and lawyers to make sure they can get away with ripping customers off. But it's not just evil corporations who rely on their employees. Most great businesses are made of talented, hardworking people who want the company to succeed. But hiring the perfect candidate is usually a long and expensive process. You've got to sort through hundreds of resumes, most of which aren't the right fits. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. That is where ZipRecruiter comes in. ZipRecruiter is an online marketplace. It started out as a way to help small businesses find employees, and it turned into the number one rated hiring site in the US. Today, four out of every five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Did you know it costs an average of $4,000 to hire a new employee? That can add up fast, especially if you end up hiring people who aren't the right match. That's why ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire, because ZipRecruiter uses AI to match your company's jobs with the right candidates. You can easily review and rate ZipRecruiter's recommended candidates right on your dashboard. And then you can personally invite your favorite candidates to apply for the job. ZipRecruiter actually learns for your ratings of candidates to send you similar candidates in the future. While other hiring companies give you way too many options, ZipRecruiter helps you find the needle in the haystack. Right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Jake Tran. That's J-A-K-E-T-R-A-N. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Jake Tran to try it out for free. Thanks to ZipRecruiter for sponsoring this video. Back in the early 1900s, getting diagnosed with diabetes was as good as a death sentence. Healthy people make their own insulin. People with type 1 diabetes don't. That means their blood sugar would get high every time they ate, and every meal would leave them at risk of dying of the same thing Alex Smith suffered, diabetic ketoacidosis. For diabetics 100 years ago, there was nothing to do but wait for the inevitable. But then in 1921, a guy named Friedrich Banting discovered how to isolate insulin from dogs. A few years later, researchers were able to create insulin injections, and the first dose was effectively given to a 14-year-old boy. Suddenly, people who were dying of diabetes had hope. Here was this miracle drug that could let them live years longer than ever expected. 
1923, the insulin researchers won the Nobel Prize. And instead of thinking of all the billions of dollars they can make by selling it, they sold the patent for just one dollar. They wanted everyone to have access to this new drug that could save their lives. But just a few years later, all their big hopes for insulin would be crushed. What would you do if you could sell people life? What if you knew a cheap, simple drug like insulin could mean the difference between life and death for people with diabetes? If you were the manufacturer, would you produce this drug for as low of a price as possible or take your chance to profit big time? Insulin manufacturers chose the latter. So instead of making insulin affordable, the manufacturers got together allegedly and decided to raise prices as high as they want in unison. At first, they said it was because they were developing better forms of the drug. But then people realized that the actual insulin being sold hasn't changed much in over 20 years. So then they blamed it on research, on how expensive the manufacturing process is, on how complex the supply chain has become. And all these excuses let them get away with doubling the price of insulin almost every five years. Because these manufacturers realized one thing. When you're selling the difference between life and death, people will do everything they can to buy it, no matter the price. And as the years went by, the three main manufacturers of insulin in America just found even more ways to screw their customers over. Only three companies manufacture insulin in the US, Sanofi, Novo Nordisk, and Eli Lilly. You would imagine that with three different manufacturers, competition would push the price of insulin down. But here's the thing, for as long as these companies have been making insulin, their prices have only ever increased. And if that's not suspicious enough, every price increase between the three manufacturers is usually very similar and around the same time. Every time Eli Lilly raises its prices, Sanofi and Novo Nordisk follow suit. And if this is starting to sound a little bit like a cartel to you, where companies band together to control prices and prevent newcomers from coming in, it's because it probably is. Now you might be asking yourself, why doesn't someone else just come in and sell insulin at a lower price? The patent must have expired, it's almost 100 years old, right? Well, that's where you're wrong again. To prevent the patent from ever expiring, these insulin manufacturers make a few tiny irrelevant changes to the drug every couple years so they can keep extending their patent. So even if a company wanted to come in and make affordable insulin, they would probably get sued for billions of dollars. And here's another problem. Insulin isn't a chemical drug, it's a biological one. So unlike chemical medications that have a brand and generic version, there is no generic version of insulin. Because it's not the ingredients or recipe being patented, it's the actual insulin itself that is under patent. And if you think manufacturers are the only ones profiting in the scheme, you are sadly mistaken. Once an insulin vial has been manufactured, it moves from the manufacturers to the wholesalers and eventually to the pharmacy. At each of these steps, a markup is added to make everyone in the chain money. Once the insulin reaches a pharmacy, patients without insurance have to pay for the full cost of each vial, and those with insurance think they're getting a better deal, but they're getting just as screwed as the uninsured, with all the middlemen involved with insurance companies. For people who can't afford insulin in America, accessing the medicine they need to survive means getting a little creative. Some travel to Canada or Mexico to get their prescriptions filled. In some cases, prices are up to 10 times cheaper. And for those who can't afford to drive or fly to get their medication, staying on their parents' health insurance for as long as possible is their best chance. Unfortunately, like Alex Smith, once they turn 26, it's not an option anymore. Others turn to the insulin black market to get their hands on cheaper medication. Others start GoFundMe accounts to cover their monthly costs. It's gotten so bad that some doctors will even hand over all the free samples they have to people in need. These samples might not even be the kind of insulin the patients need, but it's all they've got. And when that's not available, some people even resort to using expired or older versions of insulin, hoping it can still keep them alive. All the while, manufacturers are still pushing up prices, and no one can do anything to stop them.